Hello viewers, this is Manash welcoming you to the series, You the Oracle Expert, your one-stop shop to learn and practice Oracle Database Administration and Unix with hands-on experiments using Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines. Build your knowledge base, confidence, and make your way to be an expert Oracle DBA. In the previous couple of videos in this series, we learned about how to create a virtual machine and install Oracle Enterprise Linux 7.9, how to create and restore a virtual machine snapshot, how to add a virtual disk partitions using SSM command and logical volume management, how to create and extend physical and logical volumes, how to create and extend file systems online. In today's topics, I am including cloning a virtual machine, how to change the IP address of a virtual server, and how to change the host name of a virtual server. Please note that you don't have to be an expert in virtual box virtual machines, but knowledge on these areas will help you build a strong foundation and going forward, this will definitely help you manage your virtual environment. If you have not watched the previous videos in this series, I request you to watch them first so you get a better understanding on the topics of today's video. So let's start with cloning a virtual machine. To clone a VirtualBox virtual machine, we'll go to the VirtualBox console first and select the virtual machine. Make sure that the virtual machine is in shutdown state because if it is up, you will not be able to clone this virtual machine. Next, you need to make sure that you have enough free space available in your host machine to accommodate the clone copy of the virtual machine. For example, if you go to settings, and the storage you'll be able to see we have created some disks there so the first disk was around 50 gigs in size second disk was 1 gb third one was 3 gb and fourth one was 10 gb so altogether it's around 65 gb and now you need to make sure that the host machine has another 65 gigs free to accommodate the new clone copy of this virtual machine so we'll select this and click clone now in the next screen, you need to specify the name of the clone copy. By default, it's going to take a new name with the clone word suffixed after the original name. This clone copy of the virtual machine we are going to use as our administration server going forward, where we are going to install Oracle Enterprise Manager. And also we are going to use it as our email server. And also we will be installing domain name system or DNS server components here. So we are going to put a name like admin server, but in my environment, I already have a server with the name admin server running. So I cannot keep the same name as this one, but in your environment, you can of course name the clone copy of this virtual machine as admin server. So I am going to give it a name as admin SBR and the location will be D colon virtual machines where all my other virtual machines also reside. And this third option, MAC address policy, it's important that you select this last one, generate new MAC addresses for all network adapters. Because this new virtual machine or the clone copy of the virtual machine is going to be a completely independent virtual machine. It will not share anything with its parent. So we are going to generate new MAC addresses for all network adapters. And these two options, make sure that they are unchecked, keep the disk names and keep hardware UUIDs because these are all going to be new and we'll click next. Now in the clone type, we have two options here, full clone and linked clone. So the description of the full clone and linked clone is given there. The linked clone is something where the new clone copy of the virtual machine will share some resources with its parent virtual machine. We are not going to use that option. Instead, we are going to use the full clone, which is going to be a completely independent new virtual machine. So we are using this first option, full clone, then click clone. Depending on the size of the original virtual machine, it's going to take a couple of minutes as the size of the original or parent virtual machine here is around 65 gigs. So this cloning operation is going to take at least five to 10 minutes. So the cloning operation is successfully completed and now we are able to see a new virtual machine appearing in our group. 
name template and the name of the new virtual machine is admin SPR. So this is how we clone an existing virtual machine. Now we'll check a few things about the new cloned copy of the virtual machine and then we'll start it. Select the cloned virtual machine, click on settings and go to the storage and you see it's having four disks available as its parent and the size are also similar to its parent but only the names are different similarly the network adapter it has one adapter all others are disabled a clone copy of the virtual machine will have all the settings as its parents including whatever operating system you install along with the softwares you install in the original or the parent virtual machine everything will be the same as the parent virtual machine now we'll start our new virtual machine admin SBR. click start now I'll log into the virtual machine using root user and it will have the same password for root user also as its parent virtual server which was vm linux1 now if you see this new clone copy of the virtual machine that is our admin server has the same settings same look and same level of applications available as its parent now we are going to change the root password using password command the new password will be the name of the virtual machine that is admin spr admin spr it's a bad password indeed because it's not following the standards of keeping a complex password but we'll keep it for now next we are going to learn how to change the ip address of a virtual server so before we assign a new ip address to the virtual server let's first see what is the current ip address assigned by the dhcp server so if config and right now the ip address is 192.168.157 we'll send it to something else like say 192.168.167 and you need to make sure one thing before changing the IP address is that it is not conflicting with any of the existing devices which has the same IP address because your home network may have a large number of devices connected like the smartphones, smart TVs, any other smart devices, home security system, laptops, computers and many more things. If any of the two devices have the same IP address then they will have a conflict accessing the network or the internet. So that's the reason before you assign a new IP address you need to make sure that that IP address is not used by anything else in your home network. So we'll simply use a ping command and we'll see if the new IP address is assigned to something else or used by something else before we assign it to this virtual machine 192.168.167. and it is saying host is unreachable means this IP address is not in use it is free so we are going to assign this IP address to our virtual machine to do that click on this network icon click on this settings icon select the network click on this gear button and it has an IP address of 192.168.157 we'll go to this IP version 4 option we are not using IP version 6 so IP version 4 manual it will be 192.168.167 network mask will be the same 255 255 255 0 gateway will be 192.168.1.1 so this gateway is the IP address of your router usually this is the same for all the routers unless you have assigned a different gateway address now the the DNS will be the same 192.168.1.1 and if you're not sure you can go to the details you'll see that the default route and the DNS are 192.168.1 and 1 and this is coming from your router so this route will be the same 
Metric will be 1. Apply. And if you go to the terminal window again, there are the changes will not be reflected until we restart the network interfaces. So if we see if config, again it will still have the same IP address. Now we will restart the network interfaces by using the service command service network restart and it is done now let's do the if config command again and we can see that the IP address has changed now just we need to make sure that everything is working as expected let's ping the Google website to make sure that it's connected to the internet and we can see the ping command output so it means everything is working now go to applications start a browser so our new IP address is working as expected next we are going to learn how to change the host name of a virtual server to change the host name of the virtual server or our Linux host we'll first see what is the current host name so using the hostname command we can see that the current hostname is VM Linux 1 now we have a very nice command to change the hostname without even rebooting the server so that is hostname ctl that is the hostname control utility set dash hostname and the new hostname that we want to assign to this virtual machine which is admin svr and we'll see the new name again using the hostname command and we can see that the name has changed to admin svr so this is how we can change the hostname of a linux server with these three topics covered today i am concluding today's episode in the next video in this series we are going to learn how to access your virtual server using putty in a secure cell or ssh how to enable x window system in your virtual server so its gui based applications can be accessed from outside how to prepare your virtual server for installing oracle database software along with a starter database so viewers i hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful please hit the like button if you liked it and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss an episode in this series for the oracle dbas or similar educational videos that i am uploading every week